What's going on everyone? My name is Anuj. Welcome back after a mini halt. Gaming 6 disaster seems now a distant memory, doesn't it? We are 6 game weeks down with each team having played 3 games at home and away. Let's remind ourselves of the league table situation. There are no surprises to the C big 6 in the first half of the table. Having said that, not everything is ideal with teams like Chelsea and Liverpool. and not all is gloom and doom with teams like Manchester United and to some extent with West Ham. Let's look at the fixtures for the top 5 teams from game week 8 to 13 arranged from easy to difficult. The primary reason for choosing this particular stretch of fixtures is the opportunity for FPL managers to use the first wild card. This fixture ticker is created by me where I've applied the difficulty rating as per the team's current form, both home and away, injury situations, any managerial pressure and European involvement. As you can see there are more reds and greys than greens. as these teams play each other in the coming weeks for example in game week 9 arsenal plays tottenham which also features the manchester derby game week 9 stands out a bit as chelsea plays palace at sellers park and liverpool hosts brighton who is currently sitting at fourth this game week obviously does not have a single green fixture for any of these five sides hence this game week is a great option for the first wild card to be deployed the big question here is about liverpool they have the worst set of fixtures among these five teams I have marked the fixtures against Brighton and West Ham at home as grey because of the opposition defence. Brighton is currently sitting at 4th and West Ham is at 8th as far as expected goals conceded metric is concerned. As I mentioned earlier, not everything is gloom and doom with West Ham United. They have conceded 8 goals in 6 games, which is still less than Chelsea and as much as Manchester United, who have improved immensely in the last 4 game weeks. With Liverpool's game with 8 fixture versus Chelsea postponed, there's a bit less headache to deal with in the two tough fixtures against Arsenal and Manchester City as compared to the three earlier hold on to your transfers till the end of the Champions League games if Thiago and Matip's return could galvanize the Reds in putting up a good performance versus Ajax in Champions League we could see a momentum shift in the Premier League form as well City are at Wolves away home for the Manchester derby followed by Southampton home from game week 8 to 10 before bumping into Liverpool and Arsenal in 11 and 12 So you you might want to hold on to the likes of Haaland and Cancelo at least till 10 before making moves if any. Tottenham is a tricky one. Leicester at home is a plum fixture with the London derby in game week 9. Spurs did score wins last season against the top 6 opposition and it won't be a surprise if they could repeat the same. From an FPL perspective, those who are going for a wild card in game week 9 can get Kane against Leicester for a one week punt. On the wild card, Son could be looked at from game week 10 onwards for those who would like to move away. from Sala till Liverpool's fixtures turn good from game week 12 onwards. Chelsea with Graham Potter as a new manager is an intriguing thought. I would still like to keep faith in Reece James throughout this stretch of fixtures. Yes, clean sheets were hard to come by and the team looked a bit in disarray under Tuchel. They currently have a negative goal difference and have conceded as many as Brentford and Fulham. You could still expect them to keep a clean sheet against the likes of Wolves and Aston Villa who have scored 3 and 5 goals respectively till now. Double Chelsea defense isn't an ideal option at the moment. Yes, for Fana at 4.4 is a steal, but Potter has a lot to figure out with the defensive troops he has inherited from Tuchel. It's a shame Chelsea versus Liverpool fixture is postponed. We would have gained some info on Potter's strategy from this game and the Champions League game against Salzburg, which is scheduled to go ahead before going heavy on Chelsea assets on our wild cards. Now, cause of the forwards doing well this season, coupled with Arsenal's tough fixtures coming up, there's a wave of managers selling Jesus. whose ownership is now below 77% from the heights of 82%. I expect this to go further down. Having said that, Arsenal plays Brentford away from home and I would strongly urge you not to sell him before this fixture as there will be goals. Brentford are 11th best when it comes to expected goals conceded. All of us with an Arsenal defensive asset need to look at this fixture cautiously as Brentford is 7th best with respect to expected goals so far with 10 of the 15 goals coming at home. Someone's loss will transpire into someone's gain. These are the teams whose fixtures swing favorably from game week 8 onwards. Fulham at the top just sits right with managers transferring in Mitrovic from game week 8 onwards. I expect him to haul in game week 8 against Nottingham Forest and game week 11 against Burnmouth. Nottingham Forest is the worst defense on expected goals conceded metric with Burnmouth a tad better at 5th first. Game week 9 and 10 could be trickier against more formidable opponents for Mitrovic, but if you get the Serbian in your team before game week 8, is just prudent to play him till game week 13 and beyond. Aston Villa's fixtures from 8 to 10 are tempting and many would also term it as a trap. As of now, I wouldn't go near any other asset apart from Bailey who has now started back to back games. Since many's will still have the likes of Cancelo, Reece, Trippier and maybe Trent, 
getting cash or Luca Dean doesn't feel right. Aston Villa are 14th best in terms of expected goals considered in the first six game weeks. Leicester is a team in dire need of a win. Rogers would expect his troops to pick up season's first win in game week 9 versus Forest. Now the question is if Brendan Rogers stays as the manager till then. They play Tottenham in game week 8. Madison is the only option as of now to look at who looked bang average against Brighton and was involved in an error leading to the goal. If, and it is a big if, if Rogers starts playing Ihinacho regularly, there might be some relief up front for the Foxes. But from an FPL perspective, Ihinacho needs to do a crazy lot to start becoming part of the forward conversation. West Ham United has had a sorry start to the season and finally still sitting in the relegation zone. Having said that, they have played the likes of City, Chelsea and Tottenham already. They were unlucky not to nick a point against Chelsea in game week 6. The reason West Ham assets could be a bit interesting is that they have had a lot of new signings till very late in the window. You can now expect them to hit the strides and start collecting points against the weaker opposition. They looked resolute against Tottenham and Chelsea in the last two fixtures. From game week 4 to 6, they are second best in expected goals conceded in spite of playing against their London rivals. They're also second in terms of underperforming their expected goal numbers. Only Everton is ahead of them. Assets like Zuma, Fornals and Paquita need to be observed closely. Newcastle has some great fixtures from 8 to 10 and this stretch needs to be attacked judiciously. Trippier and Isaac are a must to own. One has to keep in mind of the return of Wilson who still looks 2-3 to three game weeks away. But till then, Isaac looks interesting. Pope is a good shout too, considering Newcastle had the 7th best expected goals considered numbers in spite of facing City, Liverpool and the team in form Brighton. They've had 4 draws out of the 6 so far. Two of them have been goalless draws and it's clear their marquee signing of Isaac is to finish such games along with Wilson going forward. We can't finish the episode without talking about the team in form. 4 wins in a row with 7 goals scored and just 2 conceded which included wins over arch rivals Liverpool and Arsenal. There's been a remarkable improvement at the back for Manchester United and there is more fluidity at the front in absence of Cristiano Ronaldo. Looking at the fixtures, there is not a clear stretch that could be attacked with one or maybe two Manchester United assets. However, if someone was to look at an asset, it's got to be Rashford at 6.5. As far as clean sheets are concerned, I will wait till they face easier opposition from gaming 15 onwards. Anthony at 7.5 could be a potential 8 million midfielder replacement, but the jury is still out on him as he was subbed before the hour mark in the game against Arsenal and he might be involved in Europa League games too. He is surely in the wait and watch category. Do wait for the European games to get over before making any decisions. Do press the like button if you like this video and subscribe to the channel for more of such content. See you in the next one.